The system has been built with a specific flow so that information can be passed along from one record to another, culminating in the transaction record. Users form the backbone of the system, and they are responsible for creating all the data in the CRM. On the client side, companies and contacts are added, and leads are created from contacts. Leads are an expression of interest from a contact to either buy or rent a property. For the developer CRM on the property side, projects are added and the properties are added to those projects. Listings can then be created from properties. A listing is an instance of a property for sale or for rent. For the agency CRM on the property side, projects and listings are added. Offers can then be created from one lead and one listing, which in turn leads to the creation of a transaction or be cancelled. It is important to keep records of all offers made, even those that do not conclude into a transaction, as this is valuable feedback for brokers and property owners. Internal broker and payment records can be created from transactions. All of the data in the system feeds into the automated reporting sections, giving valuable insight into all aspects of the business. There are various profile types in PropertyNexus CRM that allow the company to control who has the ability to create and access a record. Record access is done in four different ways. Creating, viewing, editing and deleting. Create access allows a user to create a record of that type. View access allows a user to see the information in a record. Edit access allows a user to make changes to fields in the record and delete access allows for the deletion of a record from the CRM. The profiles are set out in a hierarchy, with the top level being the director, sales manager, and sales administrator. There is a separate profile for accountants that has different access rights than other profile types. The next level is that of team manager and administrator, followed by the broker. It is very important to get this hierarchy set up correctly in your company and we will help you make sure that it is correct. All profiles have view and edit access for records owned by them. Team managers and administrators also have view and edit access to all records owned by members assigned to their team. The top level of profile for directors, sales manager and their sales administrator have access to view and edit all records in the CRM. Deletion of records can only be done by the top tier of profiles, director, sales manager, and sales administrator. And this is to ensure that no data is lost accidentally or maliciously. The exception to these rules is that every profile, except accountant, can view all listings and project records. Also, the broker profile does not have access at all to the transaction and related modules of payment that the internal broker and accountant have. There are differences between the developer and agency CRM when it comes to records of projects, properties and listings, and these tables highlight the differences. These tables can also be found in the screenshots accompanying this video on our website. The record owner is the user that currently owns a particular record. The owner has the right to view and edit a record but may not be able to delete it depending on their profile. You may also have the right to view and edit other users' records, and you can find out more about this in the video tutorial, User, User Profiles Hierarchy and Record Access. You can find out who is the current owner of a record by looking at the System Information section at the bottom of any record. A user can change the owner of a record that is theirs, but if they have a profile that does not permit them to see the records of a new owner, then they will no longer be able to view or edit the record. The user profile page is where each user can see and modify the information specific to them. The information is divided into sections for general information, access details that show you what access you have to the system, contact details and employment details that record your employment start date and compensation overview. A profile photo can be uploaded and changed whenever required. You can select the system language that you want the CRM to display in. This can be modified at any time. For some of this information, that which is not confidential, can be sent to property portals that have the capability of showcasing brokers, so make sure that it is always accurate. In general, there are two main ways to create records. You can use the new button on the top right of the modules list page, or the Add New button in the drop-down menu from the main tab for that module at the top of the page. For you to be able to save a new record, you must fill in any mandatory fields. 
These will be prompted for if you don't fill them in and try to save. You can also create some records from other records, like leads from contacts or transactions from offers. In general, these are two main ways to create records from other records. In the view record page of any record, use the new buttons at the top right of the screen or on the related tab in the appropriate section, click the new button. The main exceptions for this is for transactions, which can only be created from offers, and for internal broker and payment records, which can only be created from transactions. There is a new button for each of these in the view record page for offer and transaction. Views are an easy way to filter the records in the system and to see the most appropriate fields for what it is that you are searching for. Each module has different views which you can access by clicking on the module on the main menu by hovering over the main menu and selecting the module lists link. The view dropdown allows you to select the most appropriate view and the owned by dropdown allows you to select to see the records owned by you, your team or everyone depending on your profile access. Each module also has filters that allow you to filter the records further and you can then sort by each column to get the order that you want. There could be multiple pages of records and you can choose between 10, 25 or 50 records per page with the button on the bottom left of the page and see the page numbers on the bottom right of the page. Views can be very useful when looking for records. For example, to find all the companies that are real estate agencies, to view all your contacts that are buyers, to view all the leads that are sale leads of good and excellent quality, to view sale and rental listings separately, to view all incoming or outgoing payments, and then filter by those that are due. You can then download an Excel file of any view that you have on screen by clicking the export button at the top right of the table. You can learn more about this in the video Exporting views as reports. Tables of records can easily be downloaded from any list page for any module and exported to an Excel file with the click of a button. On the list page for the chosen module, once you have selected the view and owned by dropdowns, set the filters and sort by the column that you want the records to download in. You can simply push the export button at the top right corner of the table. This will download the chosen view in a standard Property Nexus Excel file template, which shows you the view, owned by, and filter details that you selected. It also shows you some system information, like when and by which user the file was created. All views from all modules are downloadable at any time without limitations, unless otherwise prescribed by your administrator for your profile type. There are two ways to edit a record. Both of them are from the View Record page. One way is to click the Edit button at the top right of the page, and the other is to double click on the pencil icons that you find in the right of every editable field. There are various fields that cannot be edited. These are typically formula fields, system generated fields, or fields that cannot be changed because they would affect record fields of another record. These fields do not have a pencil icon next to them. Once you have made changes to the fields that you would like to edit, please make sure that you click the update button in the bottom right of the page to confirm the changes. If you close the page without pressing this button, all changes made will be lost. The related tab is where you can see which other records are related to this record. For various modules, there could be a few related modules or none. By clicking on the Related tab for each record, you will be able to see the types of records that can be related to this record type, as well as the records themselves. For some record types, you can also create new records directly from here with the New button. Here you will also find the Files section allows you to upload, edit the name of, and delete files. It also serves as a database of all the documents that you want to save to this company, like license documents, commission agreements, and other related documents. You will also find the history section, which shows you the manual changes that have been made to fields so you can track previous field data. Files can be uploaded and stored in each record, regardless of the record type. You can upload passport or ID copies to contacts, ownership documents to properties or listings, and any other documents that you feel should be stored with that record. This can be done in one of two ways. Firstly, find the record 
to which you would like to upload the documents. Then, either click on the Upload File button at the top right of the page, or click on the Related tab. Scroll to the bottom and click on the File section, and either drag and drop the file, or click on the section to bring up the File Browser pop-up and select the documents you would like to upload. Then click the Upload button at the bottom of the section. You can then either delete the document if you have the correct access permissions by clicking the Delete button, or change the name of the file by clicking the Edit button, typing in the new name and clicking Save. Saving a file with a concise and easy to understand file name is always recommended so that you can see what the file is without having to open it. The Activities module allows you to add communication and listening activity notes to any record and then set calendar reminders. The activities can then be viewed on the record or in the calendar where you can see them per day, week and month. In your dashboard you can see all of the activities that you have set for the coming 14 days. You can also add new activities to any record from here. Activities can be created with the Add New Activity button in the main tab drop-down from the dashboard or from any record directly in the Activities block on the right or at the bottom on mobile. The Activities type can be set to Viewings and Photo Shoots of Listings or Communication with Contacts, Meeting, Phone Call, Email, Message or a Reminder to Contact. Each activity must also have a start and end time. You can also set an objective for each activity and add in any comments, like feedback after a phone call or meeting. You can also add other attendees, which will include these contacts or users into the activity, and then you can send them a color invite to the email addresses. Adding in all of your activities is a very useful way of tracking your to-do list. Noting down how many listings you have shown any client and how many times you have shown a listing and keeping a record for later recall. There are various ways in which to create a new offer record. You can use the new button at the top right of the offers list page or the add new offer button in the drop down menu from the main offer tab at the top of the page. For you to be able to save a new offer, you must fill in the lead, listing, and offer amount fields. You can also create an offer directly from a lead or listing record, which will automatically assign that lead or listing to the offer. In the lead record page, use the new offer button at the top right of the screen. In the listing record page, use the new offer button in the top right of the screen, or on the related tab in the offer section, click the new button. There are two types of offer records, those for sale offers and those for rental offers. When creating an offer, the offer type will be taken from the lead or listing record that you insert in the offer. Sale leads and listings will create sales offers and rent leads and listings will create rental offers. There are only small differences between these two record types. The fields will either be marked with buyer and seller or tenant and landlord. In the sale record type, there is a field called finance method, which allows you to specify if this offer is being made with a mortgage from a bank or in cash. Once the offer record has been created, if you are in any doubt as to which type of offer record this is, you can find it in the system information section at the bottom of the page on the left hand side. There are two broker fields in each offer record the broker that represents the buyer or tenant, and the broker that represents the seller or landlord. Both of these fields are automatically filled in from the lead and listing records respectively. The seller or landlord's broker is taken from the listing record. The seller or landlord's broker will either be the contact referenced in the external broker field in the availability section, or if this field is blank, then it will be the user who is the record owner of the listing record. The buyer or tenant's broker is taken from the lead record. The buyer or tenant's broker will either be the contact reference in the referring contact field in the source section, or if this field is blank, then it will be the user who is the record owner of the lead record. These fields cannot be changed in the offer record. They must be changed in the lead and listing records. Buyer or tenant's broker can be changed by editing the referring contact field or record owner in the lead record. 
seller or landlord's broker can be changed by editing the external broker field or record owner in the listing record. Each and every offer that you receive should be added to the CRM. This applies to chains of the counter offers where each offer in the chain should be recorded so that you can see the evolution of the offer. Once you have received an offer, create a new offer record and change the status to active. If the buyer or tenant's offer is rejected and given a counter offer by the seller or landlord, you can change the status to the offer to counted by either clicking on the counter offer button in the top right page or by clicking the edit button and changing the status of the offer to counted. We recommend using the counter offer button as this will automatically create a new offer from the old offer record with all of the fields filled in and it will change the status of the old offer to counted. Please make sure that in the new offer counter you fill in the fields offered by, offered amount and finance method for sales offers as well as the offer date which will automatically set as today's date but can be changed. Similarly for accepting offers you can change the status of the offer to accepted by either by clicking on the accept offer button in the top right of the page or by clicking the edit button and changing the status of the offer to accepted. Again, we recommend using the Accept Offer button as this will automatically create a new transaction from the offer record with all of the fields filled in and it will change the status of the offer to Accepted. If you close the new transaction page without saving it, when you return to the offer record page, the Accept Offer button will have changed to New Transaction, which you can click to create the transaction from this offer. There is only one way in which to create a new transaction record, and that is from an offer record. Go to the view record page for the offer from which you want to create a transaction. If the offer already has the status accepted, then click a new transaction button at the top right of the page. If it does not, then you will need to click the accept offer button, which will change the status for you as well as opening up the new transaction page. When creating a transaction, a lot of the fields will be filled in for you from the offer record, but make sure to fill in as many of the other fields as possible. You will need to fill in the start date and expected closure date fields, as well as the company's role field from the main detail section. You will also need to fill in a few fields in the price breakdown section and all the fields in the commission breakdown section. As you go through this process of the transaction, you will mark off the legal procedure steps section so that you know exactly where in the transaction process you are. Broker profiles do not have the rights to create, view or edit transactions, so please contact your manager or administrator to find out more about this module or to register a sale or rental. The transaction status and date fields are very important for management to understand their cash flows, so filling in these fields is extremely important. The status field with the options open, closed and cancelled allows you to control how the information populates the reporting section. The start date is the date on which the agreement between the buyer and seller or landlord and tenant is signed and the transaction is officially in process. The expected closure date is the date on which you expect the transaction to close and the commission to be due. It is important to show when you are reasonably expect a transaction to close and it affects the sales volume performance report as well as other important reports. The closure date is the actual date on which the transaction officially closes. It is important to show when a transaction has been closed and it affects the sales volume performance report as well as other important reports. In the developer version of our CRM, you have the ability to create transactions for sales of your own properties as well as resale listings. This is the distinction between developer sale and sale, where developer sale is the, for the sale of listings owned by the developer for which the CRM is being used, and sale is for sales where the seller is an individual person or another developer. In the agency version of our CRM, you will only have access to the sale and rent transaction types. A rent transaction is for a short-term leasing of properties, a few months to a few years, 
and in countries where there are technically no sales of properties, you would use a long-term leasing, which is 40 years or plus, as a sales transaction, not a rent transaction type. It is quite common for an agency to be involved in a transaction with a broker from another agency. In this case, you will need to enter the other party's details in the CRM. If you are representing the buyer, you will need to add the seller's broker's agency as a company and then add the broker as a contact in that company. You will also need to add the seller as a contact and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the seller's contact, you can create a new listing and enter all the details of the property. From the listing, you can create an offer and add in the lead from your buyer. Fill in all of the details and then accept the offer and create the new transaction. If you are representing the seller, you will need to add the buyer's broker's agency as a company and then add the broker as a contact in that company. You will also need to add the buyer as a contact and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the buyer's contact, you can create a new lead and then select the listing that is being transacted on and enter all the other details of the lead. In the source section, set the requested via fields with the appropriate option, then set the source channel to agency referral and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the lead, you can create an offer, fill in all of the details and then accept the offer and create the new transaction. You can then fill in the remaining fields in the transaction record as all of the other fields will have pulled through. The price breakdown fields give you an overview of the listed and offered prices and the differences between them. Listing price is the price that the property was listed for in your listing record. Final price is the price that the transaction concluded for and is the offered amount price from the offer that this transaction was created from. Percentage of listed price is the percentage difference between the final price and the listing price. A number above 100% means that the listing sold for more than the listed price and a number below 100% means it sold for less than the listing price. This will give you a good idea of how the market is performing and when you have several transactions in the system, you will start to see a trend. This is very useful when talking to sellers and landlords to give them an idea of what kinds of offers they should be expecting on their listings. For sale and developer sale transaction types, the mortgage taken field allows you to record if this transaction was done with the buyer taking bank finance for his purchase. The rental transaction types and the payment terms fields allow you to record if the payment terms are monthly, quarterly, semi-annually or yearly. The deposit amount field allows you to record how much deposit was paid by the tenant for the rental. The payment method field allows you to record who the payment will be made by the tenant to the landlord. All of these fields will make it easy to renegotiate the lease agreement when it comes to an end or to place a new tenant if this tenant leaves. The Commission Breakdown section allows you to control and calculate the commissions for each transaction. These fields differ between developer sale transaction type and sale and rental transaction types. There are a few fields which need to be filled in manually and then the rest are automatically calculated by the CRM. The following diagrams will show you how these fields are filled and calculated. The Legal Procedure Steps section allows you to track the progress of each transaction based on what steps have been completed and recording the date on which each step was completed. This section will have a series of date fields that once the step has been completed, the date on which the step was completed should be filled in. This section will be different for each country as the steps and processes are different in each country. There are fields in the transaction record that you cannot edit from the transaction record directly as they pull through from other related records of offer, listing, lead and the contacts for the buyer and the seller. 
There are also some calculation fields that cannot be edited directly. You can only affect their values by changing the values of other fields. These diagrams show you exactly where each of these fields is pulled from. These diagrams show you exactly how each of the calculation fields are calculated. Internal broker records are used to assign commission amounts earned and paid to your brokers to each transaction and calculate the breakdown of commissions received. Internal broker records can only be created from a transaction record in one of two ways. Either by clicking the new internal broker button at the top right of the page, or from the Relate tab, clicking the new button in the internal brokers section. For you to be able to save a new internal broker record, you must fill in the broker and broker's role fields. The broker and broker's role fields allow you to assign this internal broker record to one of your brokers and select their role in the transaction. By assigning the broker field, you are assigning the commission earned in the field below to the broker and can therefore track their performance in reports. The broker's role field allows you to show which client's broker represented in the deal. For developer sale transactions, this will either be seller's agent if the buyer is represented by a broker from an agency, or buyer and seller's agent if your broker is representing the buyer directly. This could be the buyer, seller, or buyer and seller's broker in a sale transaction, or the tenant, landlord, or the tenant and landlord's broker in a rental transaction. For sale and rental transactions, they could also be the middle broker if this broker was the go-between for the brokers in the transaction. For all transaction types, if you have a team manager in your organization that receives a management override commission on their team's transactions, you can add them as an internal broker record and set this broker's role to team manager. It is important to set these fields correctly as they affect the total internal broker's commission and total management override fields in the transaction as well as the reporting module. The commission earned and paid fields allow you to assign how much of the commission from each transaction each broker is responsible for earning and what percentage of that commission they are paid based on the commission split with the company. The commission earned set of fields can be entered either as the currency amount or as a percentage of the total company commission. The other amount will automatically fill in the value based on the number you put in the adjacent field. The value of these fields will be used in the calculation of the total internal broker commission field in the transaction record, so it is important to get these correct. The commission paid set of fields works in a similar way, but they are calculated on the commission earned amounts above. The commission paid percentage field will pull from the commission split percentage that you have included in your broker in the corresponding user record, but this can be adjusted if a different split has been agreed upon for this deal. Payment records are used to record information for incoming, outgoing, and internal payments. For more information on payment types, please see the video Payment, Incoming, Outgoing, and Internal Payment Types. Payment records can only be created from a transaction record in one of two ways, either by clicking the New Payment button at the top right of the page, or from the Related tab by clicking the New button in the Payment section. For you to be able to save a new payment record, you must fill in the payment type and payment due date fields. Payments are created as one of three types, incoming for payments due to your company, outgoing for payments due to third party companies, and internal for commission payments due to your brokers. It is important to select the correct payment type as there are fields in the record that will be affected by your selection. For example, the incoming payment has a field for payer, an outgoing for payee, and the internal payment has neither of these fields. Instead, it has fields for the related internal broker where the record of their commission earning is recorded, and related incoming payment where the record of commission received by the client is recorded. 
Once selected, this field can be changed, but you may lose data in some of the fields, so best to get it right in the beginning. This field is also mandatory, so it must be filled in before saving a record. The Payment Status field allows you to record whether the payment is pending, due, paid, or cancelled. This field is used in various views and reports, so it is important that it is filled out accurately and always updated when the status changes. All pending and due payments also show in your dashboard, so that you can easily monitor those payments that you need to handle urgently. Once you have marked a payment as paid, please be sure to fill out the payment method, payment reference, and date paid fields with the information on the payment. You can also upload a copy of the transfer order or a copy of the check as well as the invoice and receipt for this record to keep a full record for this payment. There are various amount fields in the different payment types and it is important to fill them in correctly. The incoming and outgoing payment types have three amount fields, amount due, amount paid, and amount received. For incoming payments, Amount due is the amount that should be paid to your company. The amount paid is the amount that was actually sent by the payer. And the amount received is the actual amount that was cleared in your bank account after any bank charges or that was received in cash. For outgoing payments, amount due is the amount that your company should pay. The amount paid is the amount that was actually sent to the payee and the amount received is the actual amount that was cleared in their account after any bank charges or that was paid in cash. Internal payments have two amount fields, amount due and amount paid. Amount due is the amount that should be paid to your broker and the amount paid is the amount that was actually sent to the broker. The internal payment type is used to record the commission payments that your company makes to its brokers. The Related Internal Broker field is a link to the internal broker record where the commission earnings for this transaction is recorded. This can be used to double check the amount that has been entered correctly as the amount due field should match the commission paid field in the internal broker record. The Related Incoming Payment field is a link to the payment record where the commission payment from the client has been recorded. This can be used to check that the commission from the client has been received before paying the commission to the broker. The My Dashboard page is the first page that you will see when logging into your Property Nexus CRM. This page shows you all the things that need your most urgent attention. Depending on your portfolio, you may have access to view this page for your team or for everyone in the company, and this can be toggled in the drop down list at the top of the page. The Pipeline graph shows your sales funnel starting with the leads that you are working on, the viewings that you have already set for the coming days the listings that you are working on, and the offers that you have in process. You should always make sure that you keep your sales funnel well stocked to ensure consistent transactions in the coming weeks and months. This graph gives managers the overview of the health of the team's pipeline and will allow you to easily spot potential problems in advance. Next, you will see the tables with your pending leads, listings, and offers, as well as transactions and payment for management profiles. These tables show you the leads and listings that need your most urgent attention, and you can view these records directly by clicking on the links in the tables. On the right of the page, you have the Activities block, which shows the next 14 days of activities. You can also add new activities directly from this block to any record. The Reporting section allows you to look at records by module and see information compiled in an easy-to-read format with each report giving you insight into a different aspect of your business. To access the report section, hover the mouse over the dashboard main tab icon in the top left of the screen and select the reports option from the drop down list. In the gray box, you will have three drop down lists and two boxes for filters. The first drop down list allows you to select the module, and the second drop down list allows you to select a specific report. The third, or owned by drop down list, allows you to see the records owned by you, me, your team, my team, and everyone depending on your profile access. The filters boxes allow you to select changes for which the records were created from and to, allowing you to narrow down the range of records by date. The 
Ports in the Activities module gives you insight into everything to do with your activities. The Type Status report shows you all of your activities by type and status. This will give you insight into the way that you tend to communicate or will show you if you are not entering all your activities in the CRM. The Broker Type Listing Activity Status report shows you a breakdown of listing activities, viewings and photo shoots by each agent in your team or for the whole company if you have the correct profile and then by status. This will give managers a very good insight into how many viewings your brokers are conducting and indeed how well they are using the CRM. The Broker Type Communication Status Report shows you a breakdown of communication activities, meetings, phone calls, emails and messages by each agent in your team or for the whole company if you have the correct profile and then by status. This will give managers a very good insight into the way in which your brokers are contacting their clients and indeed how well they are using the CRM. The reports in the companies module gives you insight into everything to do with your companies. The industry report shows you all of your companies by industry to see which type of companies you are adding to the CRM. The broker industry report shows you all of the companies by industry that your brokers have added. This will show you which type of companies they are adding to the CRM. For developers, you can monitor how many real estate agencies each one of your brokers represents. The reports in the contacts module gives you insight into everything to do with your contacts. The contact type report shows you all of your contacts by type to see which types of contacts you are representing. This will give you a very good overview of which side of a transaction you typically represent and may allow you to focus your efforts better. The broker contact type report shows you all of the contacts by type that your brokers represent. This will give you excellent insight into which types of clients your brokers are representing. This will help managers highlight strengths and weaknesses of brokers and help them to increase the number of different client types where required. The report in the office module gives you insight into everything to do with your offers. The status report shows you all of your offers by status, giving you an excellent overview of how many offers you have had and how many have been cancelled or accepted. The broker status report is for managers and shows you all of your broker's offers by status, giving you an excellent overview of how your brokers are performing by seeing how many offers they have had in total and how many have been cancelled or accepted. This will also help you to identify if brokers are having a hard time converting offers to transactions and could lead to training that will improve the broker's performance. The report in the internal brokers module gives you insight into everything to do with your internal brokers. The broker transaction type brokers role report shows you which party in a transaction your brokers represent for each transaction type. This is very insightful and may identify strengths or weaknesses in a broker's performance, giving you the ability to step in and train them accordingly. The broker transaction type commissioned earned report shows you the total amount of commission that each of your brokers has brought into the company for each transaction type. This is a quick and easy way to track their performance and will let you identify any brokers who are not meeting their targets. The broker transaction type commission earned percentage report shows you the average percentage of commission that each of your brokers has charged for their services for each transaction type. This is a quick and easy way to track their performance and an ability to charge a high commission rate and will show you how good they are at negotiating their fees. The reports in the transaction module gives you insight into everything to do with your transactions. These reports are only available to the manager and administrator profiles who have access to the transaction module. The type status report shows you all the transactions by type and status to give you an overview of the types of transactions that you do in terms of volume. Seeing how many transactions that are cancelled is a good indicator of how well you close them out and may flag issues with the transactions starting but not closing. The type company role status report shows you all of your transactions by company role and by type of transactions further broken down by status. This gives you an excellent overview of the role that your company plays in transactions and looking at the status lets you know how well you perform in each type. The type status commission currency report 
shows you the total amount of commission and company commissions for open and closed transactions and by transaction type. This gives you an excellent comparison between the commission paid by all clients in the transaction and the amount that your company has retained. The type status commission percentage report shows you the average percentage of commission and company commission for open and closed transactions and by transaction type. This gives you an excellent insight into the percentage of commission that you would typically charge for each transaction. This is invaluable in budget training as well as training of brokers on how to increase their fees. The type property type report shows you the types of properties that you have transacted on by transaction type. This shows you which types of properties you are typically selling or renting and could help you identify strengths and weaknesses. The type Contact type source channel report shows you the source of the clients that you have closed transactions with. This is an invaluable report that shows you which source lead channels your buyers, sellers, tenants and landlords come through. This will help you identify any patterns which could signify strengths or weaknesses and show you which channels are working the best and the worst. The referring company type final price status report is for developers and shows you the sales volume that each referring company, agencies and referral partners has brought to you and splits them by status. This is an excellent and easy way of tracking the performance of your referral partners and agencies. The performance reports are there for management profiles to get an overview of the monthly and yearly performance of the company as a whole, each team and each broker, by selecting the team from the second drop-down list and the broker from the third drop-down list, you can see the performance reports for a specific team or broker. The filters allow you to select only transactions created between two dates. The drop-down for year below the graphs allows you to set the start year of the two years that you want to see the information for. There are three types of performance reports, sales volume, commission volume and commission earned. The sales volume report shows you the performance by the volume of sales and rentals completed and in process in terms of the final sales and rental prices of the transactions. The commission volume report shows the performance by the volume of total and net company commissions on closed and open transactions. The commission earned report shows the performance by the volume of commission earned and paid to brokers on closed and open transactions. If the graph is showing open transactions in months that have already passed or closed transactions in months still to come, then the date fields in those transactions must have been filled out incorrectly. They can be changed in the transaction records and the graph will update accordingly.